What's up guys? Today I'm doing a modeling related Q&A slash get ready with me. I am about to go out with some friends tonight and I decided I was getting a lot of like modeling related questions in my emails and my DMs on Instagram and I figured instead of you know trying to answer them all separately I would make a video and do that here. So that's what I'm gonna be doing answering a few different questions from a few different people that I've been getting lately and uh, doing my makeup for when I go out. So let's get started. Um, what is it like to be a darker skinned model and one that wears their hair natural in this industry? Um, they, I think they want to know specifically like fitness modeling wise, um, but I'm going to keep it general and specific so I'm going to talk about both. And if I'm looking off into this direction it's because I have a mirror right here and that's where I'm uh, doing my makeup so that's what you'll be seeing. As far as my experience goes, you know, you definitely run into some of the the trials and tribulation as a dark-skinned person in the world that you do in modeling and it's not super overt racism most of the time normally it's kind of thinly veiled as a as a preference or you know the look they're going for or they're going for a different look or someone with looser hair but um, for the most part like I said I live in California so I'm in the California LA modeling market and it's not as bad as it could be but yeah so I'm not gonna lie and I like there isn't any kind of consequence to being a darker skinned woman in this industry yeah for sure I definitely sometimes feel like I would get more jobs if I was lighter I would do this if I was shorter I would do this if my feet weren't as big you know those kind of things so it's unfortunate and I'm not I like it's not there because it is but it is getting better for sure like they've embraced natural hair so much like I've never it's rare when I get asked to straighten my hair and it's awesome because I I think I came into modeling at the right time where that's a possibility because I don't have to completely damage my hair um, to do things. Like I said, because I do fitness modeling, most of the time I'm wearing my hair like, kind of like, you know, curly and a twist out or something to that effect. So uh, hair is usually low maintenance, but uh, for the most part, the hairstylists try. They try their best and if they have a problem, they ask me questions and I always bring my own like comb and brush and edge control if they don't have it. Um, but similar to makeup, those hairstylists are trying now and they're really trying to get better at it. And it's it's really fortunate because I don't have to always go on set feeling like, wow, I wish I could have those cool hairstyles. Um, sometimes, you know, you'll get on set where they're giving all these girls some cool braids and stuff like this and they're kind of afraid to do it on your hair. And it's like, my hair is the prototype for braiding. Come on, just learn how to do it on my hair and you'll be fine. Um, but for the most part, it's not bad, but you know, sometimes you run into some horror stories. It really just depends on what area of modeling, modeling you are in. Sometimes makeup artists don't have the correct foundation color, uh, the correct concealer, correct powder color, so I bring those myself every time regardless. You know, um, more commonly now, people are aware that that's a problem that dark skinned women have, so a lot of times they're trying to do better and trying to learn more. So you'll be it's quite common for white makeup artists to know how to do our skin color now um, but not everybody you know as a model you also want to have your own back so if you feel like some something is happening and you're not getting the same treatment as the other models as far as hair and makeup goes say something or bring your own stuff and do it for yourself because you control your image ultimately and that's what's important the next thing this person asked me is if I had any um, advice about getting into modeling like how did I get my first agent the first agency I signed with was called Willow Models I'm still with them actually um, they are a smaller like boutique size agency out here in Southern California they function um, as a mother agency which means they will place their models with um, uh, bigger agencies if that is the model's desire if they see promise for that model um, with a bigger agency stuff like that but yes yeah, so that's essentially what happened with me the way I got signed with them was what I did was actually submit my photos online to the, this agency most agencies actually have this where they do um, online submissions as far as photos go to get possibly scouted and signed with their agency but I submitted some digitals that I took of myself I'll insert the photos here and um, they liked him enough to ask me to come to the agency and talk to them and they liked me when I went there enough to sign me so that's how it happened I had gone to a couple open calls prior um, to getting signed there I've got I went to like one at new model management one at dang I don't remember every every name that was probably like three and a half almost four years ago 
but an open call is essentially where you go to an agency and kind of audition to be signed up. It's a little bit more nuanced than that, but it's essentially what that is. It's kind of like an audition. And a lot of major agencies do open calls. Um, so you just gotta figure out which one does it and try it out that way. Um, you can get scouted on Instagram, you can get scouted by doing an open um, call, you can get scouted by doing uh, submissions, photo submissions to their website like I did with Willow. If you are interested in getting started in modeling is do your research on the agencies, make sure it's a credible agency that you are um, possibly signing with or interested in. Uh, make sure that you check out their open call times their you know requirements for models be really realistic about it and try to actually go for actual agencies and not like um those um ones that rip you off to be a part of them you shouldn't have to pay to be a part of an agency if you pay the most you're paying is for uh, upkeeping your photos on the internet so keeping your portfolio updated on their website sometimes they'll charge people for that um, not often. Most of the time they're not going to charge you to join the agency. That's not how it works. How agencies make their money is commission from getting you jobs. So keep that in mind. You should not be paying to be a part of an agency. If, if an agency tells you that, they are scamming you. Okay, so I know I look crazy, but I'm moving on to the next question. <laughs> what I actually have on my face is a uh, translucent mattifying powder. I'm just baking my face as the YouTube gurus would say, which means after you put on your foundation, concealer, and all that stuff, if you're someone who gets a little oily or like has areas like shiny, if you don't like that, or if you just like a mattifying look like me, you can put some translucent powder on those areas, let it sit for a little while while you do your other parts of your makeup, and then wipe it away, brush it away, and your makeup is like whew, matte. Okay, so this person is asking if agencies are flexible. Are they flexible with um, your life outside of modeling? The answer here is it depends, really. Um, every agency is different. Um, some agencies don't play and they want, they are about their money and they um, care very little about your life outside of modeling because they're investing so much in you that they feel like you should take all their opportunities and all their time and go to castings and do whatever you can, go on jobs and shoot with this person. I've been very fortunate that both of the agencies that I'm signed with um, are very understanding, which works in my advantage because, you know, um, at the time I was doing like all kinds of stuff. I had a job, I was doing internships, I was uh, running track, so my Saturdays were always like blocked off and I was always at practice. And, uh, they really understood that, they made that known from the very beginning that they would be willing to work with my schedule and because they really believed th that um, I should have a life outside of uh, modeling, you know, and it varies on the size of the agency, if the people genuinely care about the models as human beings. The main agency, SLU, um, I try to make it a point to go to all the stuff they send me on. However, they know that I can't make it to everything. I don't live really close to LA. I live maybe like an hour and a half to two hours away. Um, so they get it. We're people with lives and not everyone's gonna make a fortune off of modeling and you gotta be realistic about about that. You know what I mean? So, okay, I'm kind of just smearing makeup on my face at this moment. So yeah, it really just gonna depend on what agency you're with um, and that should be something when you're researching agencies, uh, finding out if they're lenient with your work schedule, if you still wanna keep your job. You know, if they're sending you on jobs though a lot and if they're trying to send you on a lot of work, Try your best to take it because after a while they're gonna get annoyed with you if you can't um, be there or make it work or switch your schedule or something. So yeah, I hope that made sense. Um, it's really gonna just depend on the agency. Okay, so I had to step away to do my eye makeup because this was gonna take me forever and I'm like already kind of running late. But this is what I did. Can't really see it that well, but I did a big ass wing because I started messing up and the wing just kept getting bigger. And then I put on some lashes and smoked out my eyes a little bit. Someone brought up the fact that they're sh kind of relatively short and they wondered if that would be an issue as far as modeling goes. Um, and I want to tell people, because a lot of people think this, um, that you have to be 5'11", like my height, to be a model. And that's just not true. Because, little did I, I found it really quick that a lot of times they don't want people my height, um, particularly in the California market because it's a lot more commercial and ads and uh, e-commerce and they like someone who is uh, ideally, if they had a choice, I think they'd probably go like 5'8", 5'7", is like their ideal height. 
However, that doesn't stop the people on the opposite end of the spectrum who are like me and maybe like you who are either really tall or really short. Um, so the person who asked me this was 5'4". And let me tell you, I've seen some short girls who are 5'4 doing very well for themselves in this industry. So it's really all about finding your own, your own little niche and working it really well. Like some of the shorter girls do really well in e-commerce style modeling. Um, like with brands like Boohoo or uh, Fashion Nova or um, you know a lot of online retailers like Forever 21 and stuff like that. Even if you get onto the commercial scene like you don't need to be uh, Amazon to do that. A lot of times they want someone who's shorter than the male model so they go with that person. I can't tell you how many times I've missed out on roles and jobs and stuff like that because I'm 5'11 and more ideally thought of as a fashion model so I get overlooked in that sense. So no you do not have to be really tall to be a model modeling varies from person to person um, and what what industry you're in and what area of modeling so um, so this person was taking digitals of themselves and they asked me uh, advice um, specifically they're doing like fitness um, more towards the fitness modeling style digital and she just wanted some advice um, if she should wear sort of thing um, so essentially what I told her is to when you're doing a fitness style um, digital if you're taking it of yourself you don't need to be super rigid and stand there like huh, huh, posing like ah. most companies want to see your natural beauty right they don't want to see some super stiff bodybuilder they're not looking for those types of you know mr. Olympia poses okay so try to keep it natural but don't be afraid to inject some of your personality into it it's good to try to find a balance of your personality um, but as well as showing off your body you probably want to wear something like a sports bra and spandex and if you are doing any other type of modeling and doing a digital you probably want to wear something like a uh, bathing suit possibly if not a bathing suit then um, the kind of standard model uniform which is like slim pants like skinny jeans and like a black top or something that kind of looks model-esque you know what I mean um, another thing she asked is if she needed to wear makeup in her uh, digital or be barefaced. Now, if you're taking your own, you are completely, it's completely up to you what you want to do. However, if you decide to wear makeup, keep it simple. Do not wear, don't, don't wear this, okay? Do not wear something like this for your digital. <laughs> you're not, you do not naturally have, you know, clown red lips, okay? That's not natural lip color. Keep it simple, like, um, do your eyebrows, maybe a little bit of mascara. Kind of go for the whole no makeup makeup look and I really mean no makeup makeup look make sure it accurately accurately reflect reflects what you look like if you guys want a video on how to take your own digitals let me know and I can show you how to do that because I actually took some really good ones of myself and that's what got me signed to my very first agency so I hope you guys enjoyed this video hopefully you found it helpful hopefully this Q&A helped a few people because like I said I've been getting similar questions from quite a few girls hitting me up on my inbox um, if you have any more questions leave me um, some questions down in the comment section and maybe I'll do a part two to this video if you want that um, also check out some videos that I have linked throughout this video and check the videos that I have in my description box because I'm gonna give you some information to my website where I share more information about modeling and you know from terminology to my experiences I'm gonna link all that stuff in the description box of this video it was fun to do this kind of in a different manner um, than a normal Q&A but I do a little get ready with me so I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting dressed do all that um, put on my set and spray so I can go out have some fun tonight um, <laughs> But anyways, I will see you guys later, and peace. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have tried that. Peace. <laughs>